Hi and welcome back. In this video, we are going to have a look at the hardware architecture of the open source switches and the proprietary switches. So in our demonstration, we got an H-Core AS5712, which is a 48 port 10 gig switch with additional of six port 40 gigabit per second, which is based on off the shelf Broadcom Trident 2 switch silicon. On the other side, we got a Cisco Catalyst 4948, which is a 48 port 1 gigabit per second switch. And we will have a look at the hardware of these two switches and we do our comparison. These two switches, they don't have uh, similarities in the form of specification so this is a 10 gigabit per second switch this one is one gigabit per second switch but it doesn't matter that in this video we will be looking at the differences and similarities from the hardware architecture of these two switches all right now let's have a look at the inside of the Cisco Catalyst 4948 the proprietary switch and see what are the components and how this switch operates all right, so now we got the Cisco Catalyst 4948 uh, switch open here. We have removed a few of these heat sinks so we can see exactly what is underneath. So the, one of the most important thing I want to mention here is that, you know, this switch in general, all of the proprietary switches, they are all a bundle of the hardware and the software. So the software and the hardware of the switches, they are all bundled together. So if we make a line here, that uh, divide the switch in this way. This almost divides the software part, the control software part, which are sitting on the top, and the rest of the ASICs and the packet processors and the interfaces, everything in the side, in the downside. So here on the top, uh, we have this uh, CPU. It's a microcontroller. It's a freescale microcontroller. Uh, it's a 32-bit uh, PowerPC um, uh, from Freescale, uh, which is you know acquired by NXP, and we got few memories, and also I think this one is, should be a flash memory or or maybe it might be the other one, and uh, it also controls probably the fans because you know that's a connector uh, going to connect to the fan to the fan subsystem. So all the Cisco iOS software, uh, the command line, everything, the the routing software you know, like BGP, OSPF, spanning tree, everything runs here on this uh, control, uh, in this microcontroller. And from here, downside, these are all the real ASICs which are managing and processing the packet switching, packet manipulation, and all the uh, inf uh, all the functions which are related to the, to the real packet switching. So between between the CPU of this switch and the other components, it's uh, normally it's like a PCI Express connection, you know, within this PCB, which is connects the, the CPU to the to the other components and also manage the, the the main the main switching chipset. Now on the switch side, I mean uh, this part, the downside of the uh, of the switch, you see these are the, the where the power supply comes, the power supply com pumps the power, and these are all power uh, power components, the capacitors and the and the other components for that. Uh, this one is the main switching component. So the all of these ports you see here in the front, the 48 ports here, and also the SFP ports, they are all being connected to the to the main switch. So the copper ports, uh, to provide the copper ports, we need something called a PHY uh, chipset. So here in this switch, it got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six PHY uh, chipsets, which are providing the connectivity to these uh, copper interfaces. The fiber interfaces, which are in general, let's say the SFP interfaces, we can have different type of SFPs. They don't need to go through the PHY ICs because you know when you plug the SFP here, it includes also the PHY, uh, PHY electronics. So the, the SFPs, they all just go directly to the uh, probably RGM2 uh, interface to the, to the switching chipset. Uh, and the side, these are all uh, probably memories like SRAMs, uh, those GSIs or the Samsung uh, uh, chipsets, you know, we have here. They are all memories, probably it might be the cache or buffer or something. And here we got some more chipsets which are 
Mm, proprietary for the function of this particular switch model. So I think these are all network processors, uh, the network processor chipsets for doing different functions like, you know, faster packet manipulation or, you know, changing the information in the packets or, you know, for for specific uh, functions of this particular uh, Catalyst 4948 might be related to all the four of Catalyst 4000 series. So, so the point I want to make here is that, you know, in a proprietary switch, is it, uh, let's say is it Cisco or Juniper or, you know, Brocade or whatever switch is that, they are a bundle of the hardware and the software itself. So you can't install any other operating system here and use that software to manage the switch. Uh, so it comes with the Cisco IO software. You cannot load anything else. Like, you know, for example, you, can, you cannot run the Juniper Junos on this switch or, you know, something like Open Network Linux. So it's a bundle of the, of the boat. So let's have a look at the, uh, the other switch which we got, the, uh, the Open Networking uh, disaggregated hardware and see how, what the differences are. All right, so let's have a look at the inside under the cover of this open source switch and see what are the components and how, how it works and operates. All right, so now we got the uh, open networking or disaggregated switch, this H-Core AS5712 switch opened. And as you can see, everything, you know, most of the components are all modular. So we got power supplies here, we got fans and another power supply. Uh, separate fan board and this is the main motherboard of the of the switch now the reason that you know these type of switches are called disaggregated or open networking is that you know this palm component this pcb which you can see here this is where the switch software the operating system or the routing agents you know all the software which is related to controlling of this uh, main asic they are all sitting here and this is a complete modular so it's a complete uh, embedded pc actually you know underneath this heatsink you know it's just a microprocessor it can be uh, intel power pc or some kind of arm processor it got uh, ram it got flash and it got uh, uh, southbound uh, uh, interface drivers for uh, for PCI Express, which are connecting it to the to the main chipset. Also, it got to something called I2C inter IC uh, uh, communication, which manages the the other chipset in this motherboard. So this part, you know, is complete open. So you can install the open, you know, kind of operating system on this uh, on this switch on this board actually. And using this uh, operating system, the software which you are installing here, you can manage the chipset here. So the communication between uh, to manage the, the the flowing table, the switching, all the components of this this silicon here, is through the is through the software which you are going to run here. Uh, let me remove the heat sinks and give you some uh, better idea that you know how it looks. All right. So now, as you can see, uh, I have removed the heat sinks, and this is the Broadcom uh, Trident 2 chipset under this uh, that massive heat sink. And all of these ports, as you can see here, they are all just connecting directly to to the to the SID chipset. So there is no PHY interface because uh, this is just a uh, SFP ports. So the SFPs which are plugged here, uh, they have their own PHY. So there is no need to have a PHY chipset on, on the on the switch itself. And the communication between uh, between the CPU board and this chipset, the main switching chipset, the Broadcom Trident 2 is via PCI Express communication. And you know they got yeah, the other components. These are all of those the other CPLDs which are managing. You know it can they can manage this SFPs here. They can read and write. Uh, they can read actually the uh, the SFP information from the on, on the front ports or managing the LEDs. You know it's got all of these LEDs also in the front managing the LEDs and uh, the the other functions of the of the switch. You know, here we got also management ports um, here the. Uh, and also a console port. So this particular chipset, you know, you see here is a small PHY, which is for that management interface. And that serial connection also is being routed all the way back to the uh, back to this uh, back to the CPU. 
All right, and this uh, CPU module is also uh, removable, so you can remove it from uh, from the board. And as you can see, it's a complete embedded PC. Uh, as you can see, uh, in the center, we got here an Intel Atom processor, and on the top, we got its memory module, which I think that's a two modules, each one four gigabytes, a total of eight gigabytes of memory. And here on the right side uh, is a flash memory uh, where whenever you install any operating system uh, on this board, you know, that software, the operating system will get installed inside that flash. And this is that connector which connects this PCB to the, to the main motherboard of the switch. So in general, you can load any open networking operating system on these switches uh, like uh, Cumulus or Open Network Linux. All right. And uh, in this drawing, um, just showing you that, you know, the architecture of this uh, open networking or disaggregated hardware switches, uh, because mostly they are all similar. So the main difference is the type of the, uh, the packet processor ASIC, uh, which are, you know, different in terms of the, the, the supported ports. So they may come with, um, with a specific switching capacity for having one gigabit per second port, 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig, you know, up to 400 gig, uh, based on the switch in silicon. And then mostly they support different type of um, uh, SFPs or QSFPs or different stuff. Uh, some of them they come with the um, with the uh, with the files also, you know, with the 10 gig, uh, 10 10 G base T or you know even 1 G base T. Uh, but in general. They all have the embedded uh, x86 or it might be also based on the power PC or uh, or ARM processor, which are separately connected to the to the main motherboard. Now, now in the CPU board, you have the ability to install different operating system using the ONI uh, interface, which the, which is already installed inside. Uh, inside this CPU board, inside this CPU board. So only the open network in, uh, installation environment that allows you to install this type of operating system. So you can install Pico 8 or Cumulus Linux, open switch from Linux Foundation, open network Linux, or even the big switch network, the uh, switch Lite, I think. All right, so now let's have a look at the ONI, the Open Network Install Environment. And I have connected a console to the switch and I'm going to power up the switch and see uh, what we will see from the, on the screen of the, of the ONI. Okay, so now the switch is powered up and let's see what will come on the screen. Okay. So we got initialization and we got the option to go to the BIOS of the switch. So as as I explained, you know, it's just like exactly an embedded uh, x86 uh, machine. This is a standard BIOS uh, where, you know, you can do some basic configuration. You know, here we got more options because it's an embedded PC. So you can do more configuration on the, on the behavior of this embedded machine. Uh, the configuration of the North Bridge chipset, South Bridge. So the South Bridge chipset should have, it has the PCI Express ports where uh, the PCI Express are, you know, one of them or maybe more are connected directly to the, uh, to the switching ASIC on the other, other board, which we saw. And there is nothing really that, you know, we, we want to change here, but uh, let's just exit from the, from the BIOS and let the switch boot up. So this is the default. So when this, you get the switch, this, this, this disaggregated switches uh, just from the factory, uh, it just comes with the crop menu. So it has some embedded flash inside, which is uh, loaded with ONI and this crop menu. So ONI will let us to do the installation of the operating system. You can uninstall the operating system and the other options are for updating the ONI itself or doing some kind of rescue. So if I go to install OS, so uh, a fresh uh, small Linux kernel will load. So uh, the kernel loaded and it brings up the, uh, the flash memory. So flash memory is loaded and it lets us uh, use the management interface for loading the operating system on the switch. So it brings up the Ethernet 0, uh, which currently is not connected to anywhere on this switch right now. 
and once if the Ethernet zero is up, it tries to get the IP from the DHCP, or you can just set IP uh, statically. And once that is done, you can use only to install an operating system to download the operating system using TFTP, FTP, or any other uh, any other or any other method. Uh, there are a few commands from Oni, so uh, let's do um, slash bin, for example. Uh, oh, we got busybox, so that just uh, makes the life much easier. Uh, we got install URL, so this command is a very important command in Oni, which uh, which tells Oni that you know I want to install an operating system, and you have to go and use TFTP, FTP, or HTTP to download the file uh, for me. So if I say FTP column slash slash, you know, 1.1.1.1 slash, oh, oh, now it tries to download that, but however, we don't have any internet connection. Uh, the other um, uh, components like, you know, ONI uh, discovery starts, so this command actually starts, uh, restarts the discovery process. Uh, so it starts with uh, trying to get the IP address on the Ethernet 0. And then if the IP address is uh, received on the Ethernet 0, it tries to fetch the default uh, uh, firmware for the switch, which is uh, a file starting ba based on the MAC address of the, of the switch itself. Uh, if I do the ifconfig also, we can see that Ethernet 0 is here. Uh, but it's not connected to anywhere. So using the own install environment, we can load uh, this uh, open networking operating system like Pika 8, uh, Cumulus Linux, Open Network Linux, uh, Open Switch, and other operating systems for for this for the open networking switches.